and we are live on Roll Twenty Con, getting ready to play Torg Eternity today. Um, today we've got with us uh, Jeff, who is a longtime Torg veteran, and uh, Will, who I you can tell us what your experience with the game is, but I I think it's somewhat limited. Yeah, it's pretty much just uh, I bought the Kickstarter. Well, it wasn't Kickstarter. It was a bundle of holding a way back. Yeah. But I've heard about Torg for like 10 years, okay. and it sounded pretty sweet. So I'm looking forward to getting a chance to play it. And then we've got Eugene, who has played, but the last time he played was, what, 95, something like that? Yeah, it's been a few years. <laughs> so, um, so uh, we've... This is a preview version of Torg Eternity, which is not actually released yet. Uh, the materials we're going to be playing through today were materials that were published for free RPG Day, which was next week. And I was lucky enough to pick up a copy of it at uh, my local store about one week ago. And um, it's it's a little bit uh, less than the full version will be. The most significant element that's missing from this that you'll see in the full version is card play. And uh, I'm what we're going to do instead of card play today is I'm just going to substitute for some of those mechanics when we have combat rounds in a very arbitrary and hopefully fair way. Uh, substitute for some of those mechanics by imposing things on, on the players that they may like or that they may not like. And um, the, the players will be using and spending possibilities today, but in the new game, those possibilities mostly come out of the card play, which, which we don't have. So again, uh, this will be the GM kind of arbitrarily handing out possibilities from time to time, depending on, um, depending on the, the player's uh, individual performance. But it, generally speaking, if, if you do something inspiring, make an argument for a possibility, and uh, there's a good chance that you'll get awarded one somewhere along the way. And so with that, um, we are going to jump right into the game. And so let's, let's have a look at the background situation here. And then things are going to get off to a very, very quick start. It's very slowly scrolling down in the yeah. Star Wars theater right yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So the scene that we find ourselves in is Battery Park, which is on the very southern tip of Manhattan. Uh, there are there's screaming everywhere. You hear the occasional sound of gunfire. As you look around, a lot of the familiar skyline of Manhattan is beginning to be consumed by vines and branches. It uh, turns out that about 30 or 40 minutes ago, everything in the world turned upside down. Uh, th things begin to melt and dissolve. Strange creatures, prehistoric creatures, began to appear everywhere. And uh, the southern part of Manhattan is now in an absolute panic as it seems to be transport it's, it seems to be in the process of being transformed into something that's just dramatically different than what it was before 
and you all find yourselves right now running along a road beside the Battery Green in Battery Park and behind you is a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now it's not necessarily chasing you but it's running kind of in your general direction uh, terrorizing uh, the uh, population that is trying to flee and make its way out of the park and it would probably be wise the first thing you do is try to create some kind of a plan for avoiding its attention so what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna go one at a time starting with Will uh, who is playing Lily and then Jeff who's playing Constance and then Eugene who is playing Maryland and yeah that's right folks we've got uh, three guys, all of them cross-playing as females today, uh, just because they they pick these characters as uh, the the ones that uh, that they wanted that, that the archetypes that they liked. Um, we'll go one at a time. Just tell me what you want to do to try to avoid this monstrosity that seems to be bearing down on you, and will soon be right upon you. Sure. So I think Lily is actually having a uh, interview with a TV you know tv station yeah in the park and when the uh dinosaurs come in obviously i'm going to take cover behind the uh the tv truck okay all right so uh lily is going to attempt a stealth check then you should have that all on right. your character sheet and the uh, dif difficulty on that is going to be a standard 10 so what you're going to do to begin uh, with it with is what what is your base stealth? Uh, the value is a ten. Your value is a ten. The uh, the base. Yeah, probably so. Let's look at it and make sure. It says adds a one. So you've got yeah base of one. You've got one add, and then that adds to your dexterity of nine to give you a ten. So now you're going to okay. now you're going to roll a die twenty d twenty. You rolled a nine on the D twenty. So if if you cross reference that on the bonus chart, what you'll see is that gives you a minus one. Okay. So you've got a nine out of ten. So you you haven't really managed to completely conceal yourself behind the truck. So we'll we'll kind of wait and see what happens with the other characters. That sure, there's there's two other sides that I can see myself on. But before we decide uh, what comes out of that, so next is going to be Constance. Uh, I'm muted for a second. Yeah, you were muted there. Whoops, sorry. There we sorry go. Sorry about that, guys. There. Um, yeah, Constance was just walking through the woods, uh, and when this all changed, so she sees a Tyrannosaurus coming at her. Um, she is going to try to find. She's going to try to make a left turn. Uh, out of its path and try to find a tree to hide behind. That shouldn't be that hard to find a tree, but one that's big enough to obscure the, okay. the T-Rex's vision. Okay, so uh, she's also going to be making a stealth check then. Okay. All right, that so. is an eight which gives me a minus two. So she's, uh, I've got, she's got a stealth of eight. Okay, so that's uh, a so six. That would be a six. Six. That would be a, yep. So, um, so that, sorry, also falls part, that also falls short. Now you've got, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go ahead and add another mechanic in here. It's possible at any time you want to, to spend a possibility. You can spend one on each roll. If you do that, you get an extra roll. Uh, Constance could do that now if she wants to. I think she's going to do that. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Either that or she's going to get crushed. All right. And so so now course, what we're doing is we're adding 8 plus 18 on there the bonus go. chart, which gets you to a 26, which is a plus 9. Mm-hmm. So that actually gets you a total of 17. Is that right? 
Uh, yes. All right, so that is actually five more, uh, more than five above the difficulty of 10, which means you don't just succeed, you have a good success. Uh, and so you you managed to hide yourself really, really well behind this tree and uh, possibly maybe at the same time create a little bit of a distraction to help Lily out as she's diving behind the truck. And that gets us to Marilyn. All right. Well, uh, so I'm on this path out in the green area. Uh, is there anything else around besides these two people hiding? There's a truck, there's some trees, there's, there's a T-Rex. There's several cars. None of them seem to be functioning and a lot of people running and screaming all over the place. So uh, how far is that carousel to the southeast of me? Uh, so that's multiple rounds. It's This is a oh, okay. pretty large park, so it, you, okay. you couldn't get to that. Okay, so then I guess I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to run, uh, and slide under a car, right? Hopefully he won't be able to get at me underneath a heavy, a big car or truck. Okay. So let's do a check for you. Let's, let's do, um, let's, let's do a, uh, uh, also we're going to do a stealth check on that, I think. Are you, or do you not care whether you're being seen? You just want to. Uh, no, that's fine. I would like to try to slip under one. And then if okay. I get, if he sees me, he'll know where I am, but he might not be able to eat me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Yeah. I rolled a five. So I think uh, maybe I'll go ahead and spend a possibility and try again. Okay. All right. So <laughs> the, the nice thing about spending a possibility is that the minimum roll you can get off the possibility is a 10. So we take your last five and we add 10 to that and you have a 15 on the bonus chart, which is a plus two to your skill. Excellent. And my skill is nine. So, so that's so 11. An 11. You just managed to get under the car. So uh, the T-Rex the uh, manages to advance a few more feet towards you before it gets distracted with something else and none of you are obvious targets and it kind of runs off in another direction and so you all find yourself around maybe five to 15 feet within the same vicinity of each other and you've got your chance for the first time since all of this chaos broke loose uh, to catch your breath Oh. I think Lily is asked the reporter, "Did you get Did you get that on tape? Are they showing the T Rex on TV?" Um, the reporter is just kind of standing there with a the microphone at his side, <laughs> and his his mouth is like wide open, and he has no clue what you just said. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I'm gonna check my phone and see if I can't like call nine one one. Okay. Does it function? So you you pull your phone out of your uh, pocket and you have a look at it, and what you're seeing is there's no signal on it. Mm -hmm. It's still it's still functional in the sense that it will turn on and maybe run some apps for you, but. It's there's no internet signal, there's no voice signal, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Constance is looking at the tree that she was hiding behind, and she says out loud, "This is a variegated, carnivorous, endeavorous. These haven't I, I've seen, I've seen evidence of of some fossils, but there's been there's never been one like this before." She's fascinated by this tree. Nice. Right, I think Lily is going to like take the the TV camera from the distracted uh, cameraman. I'm just going to start like getting footage of the T Rex running away. I probably like get more in the open, so like draw attention from the other players. Okay, so I missed the middle part of that. I got more in the open, and I got take the camera, but I missed the middle part. Uh, I, I said that I'm going to just try and get the, the video camera and get 
footage of the T-Rex running away. Okay. All right, so when you take the video camera from the reporter, it doesn't seem to be working anymore. But oh, you, you okay. managed to bang on it a little bit and, and flip the switches on it. And somehow or another, for you, it pops back on. Nice. And, uh, and uh, you point it off toward the T-Rex, and you've managed to get a little bit of video, although it's not. Uh, really all that great but hey it's a t-rex so even if it's in out of frame in the corner of a camera maybe yeah. it's worth something you know it's the big foot of t-rexes <laughs> yeah there you uh, go um if constance notices her uh with the camera out there uh she's like, young lady find yourself a safe spot to hide these what are you doing and i and she goes out to try and pull her off the off the path i guess lily like just kneels down a little bit more closer to the you know closer to the truck so she can like kind of hide right but uh i'm still keeping like the camera pointed at the dinosaurs and then marilyn will hear this yelling and she head over she kind of sighs ah, today was supposed to be my day off Is somebody <laughs> injured over here <laughs> Yeah, and so we didn't do formal introductions at the start of the game, but but Marilyn is a paramedic, and uh, Lily is kind of a TV movie star, but not somebody everybody would recognize necessarily. And Constance, uh, of course, is uh, as you've probably been able to pick up on, is a professor of some kind of what what is what is what did you decide she was, Jeff? Uh, uh oh gosh, what was it? Uh, expert in. Uh... Yeah, you got it on here. Where did I, uh, where did I see it? Uh, Crustaceous period plants. Okay. So maybe that'll come in handy today. Yeah, you never know. All right. So let's uh, let's all make fine checks. Just make a fine check and let me know what the result is. All right. Awesome. So is the goal to beat my base? Um, uh, what did you ask again? Is my goal to beat my base? Uh, no, the or goal is goal? there's a difficulty number that in this case is a, an eight. And so okay. what you tell me what your, your, your final total is after you add in your bonus. And then if it, it meets or beats the base of eight, then you've made a successful check. For instance, I rolled a 13. So that means on the chart, I have a plus one. My find is, score is a 14. So with the plus one, I have a 15 for my final tally. Yeah. Oh, so this attribute doesn't do anything? So what, does it do anything? The attribute. The, yeah, the attribute and the add give you a skill total. And then you add a bonus to your, gives you a skill value. And then you add a bonus from the bonus chart to the skill value. Okay. Then in that case, I roll a five. I mean, my 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 total is a five. I need an eight, so okay. I did not succeed. Okay. Mine is uh, I rolled an eighteen, which gives me a plus five to my find of twelve. So that's a seventeen. Seventeen. So we've got. Uh, two good successes anything that's above five, five or more above the difficulty so in this case we had a difficulty of eight so five above that would be 13 so we actually have two good successes uh, so you're able to pick up a lot of details uh, as you look around you you notice that there is some screaming that's coming from the road over here and you can make out a triceratops that is mulling around uh, near an automobile. And you can see two people. Well, you can see one person there. There's a man who's screaming for help. But then you hear another woman that really appears to be in distress, whose voice seems to be coming out from under a car that's turned over. And uh, the man is looking at specifically at you, trying to get your attention and ask you to come over there and help him. 
um, Constance is gonna is gonna grab Lily by the by the the back of her shirt and try to pull her back. Come, please, get, 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 please help us. We need we need to help the, these people over here. And then she points over to the 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 Triceratops behind her, which All right, yeah, like the camera, like there you go, the ground, and like we see like it's sideways now, which is a picture of the T Rex <laughs> and the dinosaur the Triceratops on it now. <laughs> and we were both running over to it, I guess. Okay. So is that towards the guy or towards the uh, woman? Or, or are they both They're over both here, there. He's, he's okay, standing yeah. about right here. Th this does show the car in an upright position, but it's actually upside down. It looks like it's been sitting there rusting away for decades, even though it couldn't mm -hmm. possibly have been there for that long or be in that right. condition. And um, and you see this triceratops that seems to just be trying to kind of feed on vines and grass in the area, some of which are tangled up in the car. And so it's like pulling at the car and grunting and making all of these noises. And that's where the screaming's coming from. And then you've got an older man that is standing beside the car. And he's wearing a brown jacket. He has a hat. Um, he has that. He has this, this rope kind of tied around his neck and has the glasses kind of hanging down at the end of it. Uh, looks like he might be a, like a resident of something somewhere near the park. And he looks at you anxiously and she says, My neighbor, she's stuck under this car. Can you help get her out? I guess Marilyn will jump into action and just bend down and see if she can't see the woman and see assess how badly injured she is. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and make a fine check. Ooh. You, well, you can definitely hear her under there, but you just can't seem to get at an angle where you can see her exactly where you're at. Um, you know that she's still screaming, so she's alive, and uh, <laughs> that she's in a panic because there's this huge monstrosity that's pushing this car around all over the place, but you can't really make much else out. Um, I, oh, go ahead. I'm literally going to yell out, uh, see if you can get under there, and I'm, I'm going to distract the, t the triceratops, and I, like, run over to, like, um, maybe there's like a broken branch that fell off a tree. I like try and hold it over by the Triceratops, see if I'll eat the eat the branch instead of trying to move the car. Okay. And while you're doing that, uh, this this older man looks at you and says, "Laura, her name is Laura. He says she's got a son. He's probably at home right now. I'm gonna go check on him." And he, he kind of yells back at the car as he starts trotting off in this direction. He says, uh, I'm going to go check on your son, Laura. And uh, he soon disappeared. So now um, we've got Lily over here kind of holding the branch up to the Triceratops. And we're going to make a survival roll. <laughs> Come on, roll good. Let's see if you can survive this. Oh, I think I survived this. Yeah. So what's your total on that? Um, hold on a second. Where where my chart go? Here it is. So you said I take my base value, right? And then I add the modifier, right? So that's fourteen. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's that's good enough. You you manage to draw its attention to you. And uh, it's, it's all of these sweet, sweet leaves that are just kind of hovering right in front of it. And it grabs hold nice. of it. It actually kind of pulls you forward when it does it. But you just hold on to yeah. that branch trying to kind of keep it in front of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're, you know, within six feet of this thing. But it's, pull, it's distracted. It's been pulled away from the car for the moment. Perfect. Um... Okay, Constance is going to try to go over over here this side of the this side of the car. Okay. And she'll crouch down and see if she can see inside the car. All right, so go ahead and make a fine check. All right. Uh 
much better. That's a 13. That's a 1 uh, to add to my find, which is 14. So that's a 15. All right. So that's a good result. Uh, so you manage not only to locate her inside the uh, kind of inside the vehicle, but you kind of see this place where you think maybe she could get pulled out of it. Okay. Um, when you say a place where you think she get pulled, like a like a broken window. Yeah, yeah. It's it's okay. it's crushed, but there's enough of a space within this window that you think she might you might be able to get her to fit through, and she's not far from it right now. Okay, and I um. Uh, let's see. I look over at um, Marilyn, who is probably much younger and in better shape than I am. And I, I wave over. My, my dear, come here, come here, please, please come here. We need, we need some help here. She's uh, all business now, right? So she comes around. And is like, yeah, let me see what you got. Um, and I try to. It, 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 obviously, there's other branches around. Can I use? Can I find something to use as a lever to try to open up the the spot a little wider? You know, something to rock the car. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, go ahead and make a fine check. Okay, that's uh, still fourteen. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, there's a lot of like rusty metal and just lots of junk laying around all over the place. It seems out of place, but it's it's mm -hmm. here nonetheless. And so you managed to put enough of it together that you feel like you can probably create a little bit of leverage as somebody tries to pull Laura out of the car. Now, in the meantime, the Triceratops is getting to the end of this branch here on the other side. <laughs> all right. And Lily is getting uncomfortably close to it now. Mm -hmm. I think when it gets like kind of close, but not too close, like tries to pet it on snout. Okay, let's have a survival check there. No, no, no. You know, let's do a beast riding check instead. But you can use, sure. you can use that bonus. There you though. go. Uh, it's the same, so uh, 14. A 14. Yeah, oh, so. 13. Sorry, 13. So you you managed to kind of pet it a little bit, and uh, it's it remains calm and responsive for you at least for the moment. So right. yeah, you know, we got kind of a nice dinosaur, nice dinosaur thing going on over here while people are scrambling around at the car. All right, back to the car. Uh, so Marilyn is going, going to try to. Yeah, yeah Marilyn's going to try to pull her out. Uh, this is actually just going to be a raw attribute test uh, that you can choose either strength or dexterity for it. But okay. the nice thing about it is that you're getting some assistance from Constance here. So you'll get a plus one bonus because she's giving you a little bit of leverage there. All right. So just the D20. Okay. Right. So you're going to roll your D20. All right. So that gives me a plus one. So that's three from the 16. Plus one is plus eight uh, for my dex is uh, 12. 12. And then did you add your plus one for your assistance as well? Uh, that's with the plus one. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, so yeah. you it's actually pretty easy. You managed to reach in there and grab her. And she looks a little bloody, but you, you managed to grab her and pull her out of the car. And then it just kind of, boom, comes back down and hits the pavement as soon as she's back out of it. I guess I'll try to use some first aid to make sure she's not going to bleed out or something. Yeah, okay, so go ahead and make a first aid check then. Ooh. Oh, no. I failed. All right, so as you're, She's you're, going to die. you're trying to look at her and assess her situation, and while you're doing that, uh, you, you drop the medical tape that you're carrying, and the medical tape just kind of rolls across the pavement and goes underneath the car. Um, any <laughs> any time you have a, a natural one, it's it's considered to be a mishap. And in fact, sometimes there's even uh, uh, greater ranges that can create mishaps, especially when you're using automatic weapons. But in this situation, 
uh, it's it just you just lose that medical tape, and it's it's going to be totally irretrievable at this point. <laughs> oh boy. And uh, so, and and Laura, in the meantime, still seems to be in shock. She's just kind of laying there on the pavement. I guess uh, I'll try to do what I can, but obviously, it's I'm not I'm not having a good day. So I think Lily is like has to Triceratops attention, so she turns around it, okay, and it probably like trying to lead it towards another bush to eat. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and make another beast riding check. Yeah. Come on, roll one. Roll one. No, no, 17. <laughs> All right. Triceratops is my friend. She wants to get gored. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you successfully kind of get its attention diverted on some, on another bush about 10 feet away, and it's just starting to munch away on that now. It's going to take it a while. All right, I can safely back away from the yeah. Triceratops then. Yeah. I could, but it's so awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I actually do. A, little, a couple of feet away, anyway. Okay. All right, so Laura looks like she's trying to tell you something, but she's having a lot of difficulty because she's in shock. So is that something I can attempt a second time or yeah, you first can, aid? You can attempt it a second time. All right. Okay, that's a 16. Yeah, so Laura recovers a little bit uh, after a couple of minutes, and she sits, sorry. She, she sits up and she looks at you, and she says, um, uh, thanks for pulling me out of there. I don't, I don't know what that thing is over there, but I thought I was a goner. Uh, my friends here say it's a triceratops. And she, this, she just listens to that, but like what you said does not register on any conscious level because she doesn't have a concept for what you just said to her. Uh, but she does say to you, I have a son. Um, I need to go try to find him. Can you help me try to go find him? I kind of look at the other two and say, uh, I think I need to take her to her son. Watch out for that thing. I point at the Triceratops talking to Lily. <laughs> no, it's so friendly. Yeah, Lil Lily's trying to figure out a way to get a saddle so we can all ride it over to, the, to find the sun, I'm sure. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Constance uh, says, yeah, la ladies, let, let, we, we should get away from here as quickly as possible. Try to get to some safe place. Hmm. Uh, I believe your your neighbor uh, said it. You live this way, and constant points back uh, back over here. Yes, yes. He he lives. He's my next door neighbor. He, he, the one that was standing outside the car. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He's he's my next door neighbor. Well, well let's uh, go find them. Okay. So she leads you uh, across the street from the park to a small apartment building. It's actually, I say small, it's three stories tall. And it takes you into, out of, kind of out of the chaos of the street and into the dark, electricity-free uh, interior of the first floor of the apartment building. And th there's a lot of junk that's laying around all over inside the first floor of the apartment building. I'll put you all in the hallway that kind of leads into it here. Uh, there's a lot of junk on the first floor. There's kind of a little desk that people can sit at and a couch. And then there's a series of mailboxes that people apparently check here but, uh, before they go up the stairs. And, and Laura walks in in front of you. And she immediately notices over by the, uh, the mailboxes a man. And you can see the brown coat, and you can see the hat, and you can see the back of the ropes 
that were uh, that were on his glasses, but he's just kind of standing there at the mailboxes, kind of grab. He's kind of grabbed hold of them a little bit, and he's leaning into them, and he's facing away from you. Mm. And she starts walking over toward him, uh, saying, uh, "Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, did you find him?" Okay, I'm going to just walk into the room and be quiet. I don't know, know these people. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I'm going to just, does Mr. Grant look okay? or? He looks distressed. Well, his back is to her right now, but all of a sudden he wheels around and turns toward her. And he no longer looks the same. He looks like this now. Uh-oh. And he lets out this growl and this grunt. And uh, Laura just screams and stumbles back when she hears him. And almost immediately, two more people that, that look like they're wearing torn street clothes, but that have a very similar appearance, uh, kind of jump down off the stairway and land behind you where you're surrounded now. Okay. And they are preparing to attack you. So we're going to go into turn-based combat now. Awesome. Now, during this round, all of you are going to have an opportunity to go first. Um, you, you'll, you're going to have an opportunity to act first. And then after that, they're going to have an opportunity to act each one in turn. Now, during your combat turn, you can move a distance that is up to your dexterity. You can do a, you can do as many free actions, things that don't take much time at all, as you like. And you can uh, uh, do an attack and uh, or or some other type of action. Now, one of the unique aspects of Torg is that uh, you interaction attacks are very very useful. You can weaken the enemy or boost your own allies' capabilities by using a trick or a taunt or an intimidate type attack. So don't ignore those if you don't feel real confident in your ability to physically do damage in a situation like this. Uh, mm. So for this turn, each one of you will get a combat turn, and then each one of them will take a combat turn. Okay, you said we can move up to our uh, dexterity. Yes, you can move beyond your dexterity. In fact, you can move up to eight times your dexterity, but you take a penalty on your action if you do that. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, my so my my dexterity is seven. Is that seven feet then, or? Yes, it's seven meters. Okay. Seven meters. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So Lily is somewhere over here. Oh, yes. Next to this. Next to this guy, uh, next to, oh, well, whoops, I'm Laura, here. I okay, think right. you're talking about Laura, but yeah, she's... Or Laura, excuse me, I'm sorry. She just kind of screamed and fell onto her yeah. back about right here. Okay, um, then I am going to move over and place myself between this guy and Laura. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, I'm going to use my trick skill, and um, Constance is going to go to the, the oldest trick in the book, and... Point at the uh, point at this guy over here. Okay. And, and um, uh, your voice went out for some reason, Jeff. Uh oh. Hmm. Yeah, I don't hear him either. I don't know. Oh, yeah, he left the chat now. No, he's, no, back. he's come back. No? Okay, we got you okay. now. Okay, there we go. All, All right. right. So yeah, we got oldest trick okay. in the book, and then oh, that's okay. where we lost you. She Okay, she points at uh, at this dude over here, and and uh, and uh, and she looks look looking talking to this guy here. She's gonna try to uh, trick him into going after 
after this one. And he's the one. He's the one. Okay. Which is a pretty lame uh, trick. But then again, these guys look pretty dumb. So. Oh. Um, that mm -hmm. is a. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a possibility. I'm going to go ahead and spend another possibility and roll again. And this time that will get me a 16. Pretty sad rolls. Uh, it's a 3. That's a 17 total to my trick. 17 total on the trick. So that is actually a, uh, that's a player's call success. So you, you awesome. get, there's three levels of success. You have a standard success if you equal or beat the difficulty. You have a good success if you're five or more above the difficulty. And if you are 10 or more above the difficulty, then you have a, an outstanding success. And one of the results that you get from that is what's called a player's call. So this human is going to do exactly what you're trying to get him to do as a result awesome. of your, your effort. And so, who wants to go next? I think Lily is confused and shocked by <laughs> physical violence. Like, I don't think she gets in real fights too often. So she probably uh, just picks up, like, um, I think she picks up the chair. Like, okay. just backs away from the, like, the threatening human that's right next to her. Okay. All right. So Lily's got a chair, and she's going to try to defend herself if she gets attacked. That's the way I understand yeah. it. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else she's going to do? Not really. I, I mean, she's just really confused. Okay. All right. So Marilyn. Yep. Marilyn sees this happening, sees these guys taking this aggressive posture, sees that there's something wrong with them. So she thinks maybe... Like, uh, you know, when gangbangers show up the scene of an accident, you can sometimes chase them off or something. So she's got in my inventory list, there's a, it says, a, a improvised club. Yes. So whatever that is, I'm going to like pull that out. I don't know. Like it's I, for some reason I was immediately thinking like it's the club, you know, that thing that they used to use to lock cars from driving away. Right. That's fine. That's fine. I'm sure there's one of those laying around somewhere. And she just starts banging it on the top of this desk over here and like shouting and she's going to try to intimidate them. Okay. All right. So you have rolled a, a 10. 10s and 20s explode automatically. So you get another D20 roll here. Nice. I did not know that. So does those add together? So that's a 22? Yeah, you have a 22 total now. Sweet. Okay, so that's 8 plus my Intimidate of 10. So that's 18. You got an 18. All right. And you're directing it at this one in particular? Or were you trying to direct it at all yep. of them? Oh, I was aiming. I was thinking of the one that hasn't okay. been either tricked or <laughs> is okay. about to get attacked by his friend. Yeah. Okay. And 18 is also an outstanding success. And... So he kind of goes stumbling back in this direction, uh, concerned with this aggression display that this strange-looking person is creating with this strange object in their hand. All right. So now we get to the villain's turn. Uh, the first thing that is going to happen here is that this transformed human is going to run over and attack this transformed this transformed human. So here we go. All right. oh. But he totally whiffs. I mean, he's he is so he's been so effectively tricked that he's out of his mind and just totally whiffs when he tries to attack the guy and just bangs his club down against the ground and the club actually shatters so that he's not armed now. Uh, so this guy doesn't quite know what to do from that, but he he is still going. He, he can see what happened here, that he got blamed by Constance for uh, something that he's not responsible for. So he runs over toward Constance, gets directly across from her, and takes a swing at her with his club, 
which is going to have a total of three. I take and so Constance is going to compare that to her melee combat ability, which is a seven. Which is a seven. So that is a miss awesome. against Constance. He misses that, and then this guy uh, has been so intimidated by that outstanding success that he's just kind of backed off and is not doing anything at all all right so now we're going to go to a second combat round now now normally in the drama deck in a normal game is going to dictate what happens in each one of these combat rounds but we don't have a drama deck and so i get to just make up what's going to happen instead and in in this case what's going to happen is you all are going to go first again but when the time comes for the transhuman uh, transformed humans to go they're going to have a condition that's called up and what that means is they're automatically going to get to roll two dice in addition to any rerolls or explosions that they get so whoever wants to go first can go i well, it's just going to say these, these guys are going crazy. We got to get out of here. And um, try to help Laura up. Okay. So we can get up the stairs, maybe. Is there time for that? Uh, yeah, somebody could try to get up the stairs with Laura if they wanted to. Yeah, I want to try to do that. Okay. So, so I roll d20? Or? Uh, well, actually... Uh, you can just grab her and, for your turn, go up the stairs and try to find the sun. Uh, you don't have yeah, to make any rolls for that. Okay? okay. All right, so Laura, in all of this confusion, Lily's managed to grab Laura, and uh, she's kind of helped her up the stairs, and they're heading down the hallway toward where they hope they can find her son. Oh, is it the hallway we're going into? Well, you get up to the top of the stairs, and you're on a different floor. Which, oh, there's another which, hallway. Gotcha. Which we can't see here, and you're going down that hallway trying to, as she's leading you to her apartment. Okay. Um, Constance has a guy right in front of her trying to swing on her. Um, does she have any kind of weapon, weaponable item near her that she could grab? Um, I think that all of the characters begin with some kind of weapon. In her case, yeah, she's actually can easily grab the leg of a chair and swing at it. With okay. Her. Okay. Um, that's what she is going to do. And that's not going to be real great. That was a s eight. Minus two, melee is seven, so it's a, that's a five. Um, I'm not going to spend any possibilities right now. All right, so you, so that will be a miss. So that's a miss, yeah. Yeah, it's, she swings the chair leg and doesn't even get close. It's unarmed combat is a uh, is a nine. Yeah. So we've got, I guess, Marilyn still. Yep. So I had some success intimidating the one. So I'm going to try to intimidate the one by Constance. Uh, and I'll like whoop whoop and swing this thing around and bang it on the ground and charge at him, basically. Okay. So that would be an eight total as it is. Um, that is success. That is a success. Okay. They're not so smart, so I will do that. <laughs> Just get them to try to back off of Constance so that maybe she and I can get up the stairs as well. Okay. So what you've done is you've, you've managed to distract it with your effort, and you can choose to either make it vulnerable, which makes it easier to hit, or to make it stymied, which makes it harder for it to attack. Yeah, I was going to go with stymied. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to, you know... Take okay. a, yeah, not not attack Constance. So he's going to be stymied until the I put the wrong marker on him. Sorry. <laughs> he is going to be stymied until the end of his next turn. Hmm. 
right? So immediately, you get out of there. yeah. So immediately, uh, this one we'll go ahead and use his attack against Constance first. So he is going to have a melee t uh, melee weapons total of seventeen. Does does the stymie affect that? Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. He's going to have a twice? he's going to have a. The, no, it does not. It does not. Oh, the only God. thing it does is it reduces, but it does reduce his, his total to sixteen. I I didn't add that in. Okay. Okay. Uh, so 16 and my, um, melee is seven. So that would be a difference of nine. Is that right? Yes. Two shock and one wound. Okay. Um, do we still have the rule of spending a possibility to reduce damage? Yes, but we're not yet to a point where you've got, you've taken any damage. So. Oh, okay. I, th yeah. I thought you just hit me. Yeah, I, t I did just hit you, but damage is actually a separate event in Torgat. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So. Great. So, um, so what we, what he's got is a good success. That means he does his base damage on his club, which is eleven, and then he's going to roll a six-sided die to add to that four more. So he does fifteen. And what is your toughness? Uh, my toughness is seven. Seven. So he's done eight points above. So you're going to take one wound, and you're going to take three shock. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then, it, so then, if I want to spend a possibility, you can eliminate the wound, or you can roll a d6 to try to get rid of the shock. I will eliminate the wound. Okay. So now the only result here is the two two shock. It's not three. It's two. If I said three, that okay. was wrong. Yeah. Okay. So, so two. There we go. So he takes a swipe at Constance and uh, manages to deliver a small blow to her. So this one is going to turn around and go up the stairs and start trying to chase Lily and Laura down the hallway. He won't be able to reach them in time to attack them. And then this one is just going to run up and take a swing at Marilyn. And his unarmed combat, his his uh, melee combat total is an eight. Uh, so what is Marilyn's melee combat? Nine. A nine. So he misses her. She manages to jump back and evade it. So now we are going to go to a third combat round. And uh, this round, I'm going to let the players again go first, but this time. The players are going to have a condition that will allow each player to take two actions. And then the villains will go after that. So whoever wants to go first can go. I think Marilyn wants to hit the fellow in front of him, in front of her, with her club. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that six plus nine is 15. A 15 to total? Yeah, okay. To and against his melee, that's a six. So uh, that's six above his melee. So that means you get to roll, you get to do your base damage, plus you can roll the 1d6 as well, which is uh, coded as a de down there on the macro. So that's strength plus two, which is 11, plus two is 13. 13, all right. So that does some shock to to the uh, attacker. But you've got another action. Hmm, I wonder if I should have done something more clever to put these together. Uh, I guess I could just try hitting him again. Yes, you could do that. Why not? Uh, 
Oh, I get to explode it. You sure did. Yeah. All right. So I 21, which is eight plus my melee combat of nine, which is 17. All right. And that's uh, 17 against his toughness of nine. That means you get to do your base damage plus roll uh, DE as well. All right, so I did 14 that time damage. 14 total damage? Yes. So that, uh, so you managed to just hit him square in the jaw and knock him backwards, and he falls to the ground unconscious. With that uh, second yes. roll. Yes. Nice. That's right. And then maybe I'll go over near the other transformed human and try to assist Constance just by being a second target, if nothing else. Okay. All right. Who wants to go next? Um, while she's coming over towards me, before she steps on this rug here, yeah, Constance is going to pick that up, and I, I'm assuming this will be like a maneuver. I'm going to try to pick that up and throw it over this human's head. Nice. Okay. Would that, I mean, would that be considered a maneuver? Or? Yeah, let's call it a maneuver. Okay. And roll. Oh, God. Um, all right, I'm going to spend a possibility. I want this to work. Okay, that's a 14. It only gives me a plus one. And my maneuver is seven. So that's an eight. That's enough to be successful. So you can impose oh, a good. you can impose a stymied or a vulnerable condition on him. Okay, and uh, vulnerable means vulnerable means that he his defenses are minus two the, to mm -hmm. any subsequent attacks. Okay, let's do that. All right. So his defenses are now, he's, he's got this rug in his face, and he's fighting against it to try to get it off, and, uh, and not really able to see who's there or defend himself very well. Okay. So then for my second action, I'm going to try to bop him on the head with the chair leg. Okay. Wow. There we go. That explodes. Now let's hope it's something good here uh right. still pretty good still yeah. 27 is a plus nine 20. yep i'll take it uh so a nine and my um melee is seven so that's 16 yeah and he's got that uh, that uh condition yeah so uh yeah with that vulnerable condition he can't see you you just swing it right into his gut and he bowls over and uh, falls down onto the ground, stunned. He's going to be out of it for a while now. Nice. And Constance gives a whoopee! Oh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Lily is up upstairs. Is there like a cart maybe in the hall I can push down the stairs? To oh, toward the transformed human. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's junk sitting in the hall that you can push back toward him. Yeah, sure. okay. I want, I want to be like a, a, a big cart. Like okay. maybe it's like full of towels or something. <laughs> okay. I just want to take it and give it a running start and just push it down the stairs okay, right so, into him. So this is going to be a maneuver test. Okay. Uh, that's still a d20, right? Yes. So. Okay. Um, maneuver... Uh, okay, so my base value is a 10, and then that's plus 2, so 12. 12, yeah. So um, that is enough to kind of push him back where he can't advance and also put him in a vulnerable position for attacks until the end of his next turn. Okay, and I get a second attack? And you get a second action, yes. All right, and I think yeah, you see Lily come down the stairs. And just like slam him with uh, that chair leg, okay, and knock him off the stairs so he falls down too. Okay. 
Okay. So that would be an eight. Uh, an I eight, think. an eight total. Let and me see here. Yeah. An eight, eight that, that just uh, manages to miss him. Just ma Oh wait, he's vul he's vulnerable. So yeah, you made him yeah. vulnerable. So actually, it does hit him and do some shock damage to him. All right. Okay. Um. So I roll a d6. Uh, no, you don't. In this case, just um. Oh, that's right. We we don't do the shock damage yet. You need to. What is your base dan? It only does its base damage at this it's level. Plus strength plus two. So and my strength is a seven. So it's a total of nine. Yeah. So that does do a couple of shock points to him. Okay. He has a he has a toughness of nine, and since you've met it just at, at the exact level, you do two points of shock to him. Cool. All right, and he's the only one that's left now, so uh, he's he kind of gives up on Lily for now, and goes <laughs> and kind of turns around and jumps back down toward Constance. Okay. Look out, Constance! <laughs> You pushed him back her way, you know? So he, he he rolls a melee total of seven. What is Constance's melee weapons rating? Uh, melee is seven. Seven, okay. So he is going to do 11. What's her toughness? Her toughness is uh, seven. Seven. So that's uh, within zero to four. So that's two more shock to Constance. Okay. In the meantime, uh, a little boy comes running out, about 11 years old, comes running out of a door. Mom, 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 kind of grabs hold of Laura. Uh, he says, I don't understand what's happening. What's going on, mom? And she says, I don't know either, but, but we're going to get out of here. I think these people will help us. And they, sure. start, they start making their way toward the <laughs> stairs. Uh, hold on, there's still one crazy guy left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, so this uh, human here kind of looks and sees uh, Constance uh, with her weapon and Marilyn looking intimidating and Lily coming back down the stairs and now there's another little human that's coming along with them as well and he starts uh, kind of kind of backing off and running toward the door um, I'm gonna let him me too all right yeah but but Constance is gonna shake her chair leg at him as he runs away <laughs> she's she's feeling pretty badass right now for the first time in her life. Okay. <laughs> yeah, M Marilyn will just shake her head and said, "Man, this neighborhood's really gone downhill." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. So yeah, so um, she manages to get downstairs uh, with the little boy. He seems to be in pretty decent physical shape, at least. You don't notice there are any issues with him. And uh, you're free to leave the apartment, and uh, you're going to earn two possibilities each for uh, nice. defeating the humans in that scene. Now, again, normally in you, this would not be the way you get possibilities in games. You would have cards that you would be able to play to add possibilities. But that's the, how it's going to work in this game because that's just kind of how the economy is set up. Okay. I think as we go back into the light, Lily has to put on her sunglasses. <laughs> I'm not sure what that accomplishes, but it's on my character sheet. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, so you you well, walk she does out. Look cooler now. I mean, isn't that something? You walk out so. into the sunlight, and uh, things have not changed a whole lot. Well, actually, they have. Uh, there's more stuff growing all over the place. Uh, there are a few less people running around any longer, but uh, most of them seem to be terrified and in shock and hiding. And there's a whole lot more creatures all over the place doing different things. Wow. Um, 
where would be the nearest, we want to find some sort of safe location. So would we know where the nearest, say, police station or some sort of public, some sort of public building? I know we were just over this park, but is there something? Well, you do kind of see something over here that looks like a military vehicle. I'm sure it's safe. Yeah, girls, that way. Look over there. Mm. Okay. That's as good a thing as any, I guess. <laughs> so things are still a little chaotic, but you do manage to get over close to the military vehicle, and what you see when you get there is not at all what you expect to see. Um, there are multiple National Guardsmen, about a dozen of them, that are all lying uh, on the ground dead. Uh, most no. of them have severe trauma either to their chest or to their head. There are, are tons of, of automatic weapons and pistols that are just laying down beside them. And the most bizarre thing is that there are two or three creatures that look about half human and half dinosaur that are lying mm -hmm. dead beside them. And these creatures appear to have gunshot wounds, either in their chest or their head. And okay. as you start g getting a closer look around the scene of whatever kind of firefight there was here, uh, you notice that one of the National Guardsmen is still kind of struggling. He's got labored breath uh, and uh, is still struggling to kind of push himself up off the ground. Marilyn, that young man over there. Yes, she snaps into our action. Ah, runs forward, pulls out her second roll of medical tape, and gets to work. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, let's make another first aid check. Another one. Oh, it just looks All like right. a one. Yeah, yeah, almost. So it's uh, let's see. So that is an 11 as it stands. Totally. That, that is just enough to uh, get him stabilized and uh, out of shock where he can sit up and talk to you. And, um, and <clears throat> he just looks at you and says, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Uh, we came with instructions to come down here and evacuate people. There's a defensive perimeter being set up, up outside of Lower Manhattan Hospital. And just as we started to try to gather people up, we were attacked by these things. He starts pointing at them. All they had were spears, but our, our, and our guns worked, but only for a second. And then they just stopped, and they just completely mauled us. I, I thought I was a goner, but something happened, and they got distracted and went running away. Um, they, they had a leader. He was the worst of all of them. He seemed to have this red pain on his face. He's 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 the one that's in charge. I know it. Where'd he go? Did you see him? He says they just ran off uh, into the park somewhere. I don't know where they are now. Mm. All right. And you said the the uh, out of character the perimeter you said was being set up at where at now? At Lower Manhattan Hospital. Okay. And do we know how far away that is? It's uh, three or four blocks. Okay. North northward. Uh, it would be off this map, but northward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we've got Laura and we've got her son with us still, correct? Yes. And we got to get them to safety. It seems like our best bet. Mm-hmm. I think Lily, um, Lily is like looking at these dinosaur people and like trying to see if it's like a costume or something, I guess. <laughs> Maybe they have like a wallet with an ID. No, it's nothing like that. These, these things look legit. Okay. And In that case. And everybody go ahead and make a fine total. All right. Just tell me what no. what you got as your total. 
Ooh, boy. Uh, my total is four. My 17. Total is five. 17. Okay. So, um, so Marilyn, as she's looking around, notices these shadowy figures, as it's starting to get dark now, that are gathering around kind of the lower part of the battery green here. Dozens and dozens of them that have profiles that look like these these creatures that are half dinosaur and half men. And they are digging trenches all across the lower part of Battery Green there. Mm. It's almost like they're preparing some kind of sure. mass grave. I'll report this to my new comrades here. My triceratops friend around it. We need his help. Yeah. Well, uh, I, well, well, I don't know about you girls, but I don't plan on uh, being put in that mass grave. We need to get we need to get this way. All right. Yeah. Uh, so Lily's going to pick up one of those assault rifles. Okay. And I think she knows how to shoot it because she's that's totally what you do on your reality TV is you learn how to shoot. Yeah, and she probably does. She have an ad in fire combat. Oh yeah. Oh well, then so she knows. Cool. She knows for sure what she's doing with it. Then. Yeah. Yeah, me as well. Uh, I will uh, pick one up as well. I've got fire combat, okay. and uh, say, well, let's get this little boy to the safe zone or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know where the hospital is. So our, I guess our medic knows. Okay. So we'll let, follow her. Let me quickly give you the stats so you can add them onto your character sheet for the automatic weapons whoever's carrying one. There's also a couple of armored vests in the area, if you want to use that. You can put those on. Yeah. Um, sure. So these, so rifle, these, rifles, these rifles do a damage of 14. They're capable of rapid fire and full auto fire. You might put that in their notes. And they each have 30 rounds of ammunition in them. You can get as many clips as you want to carry with you as well. There's, this is a veritable armory that's lying around you right now. Yeah. All right. So the the the, the private that uh, managed to you managed to revive, he looks at you. He says, "There's no point in taking those. They're not going to work." I turn him and say, young man, there's many things that you do not know. Oh, I'm not going to shoot anybody, but it's very intimidating. Marilyn's going to, like, you know, lock and see if it seems to be functional. Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm going to take one of the armor vests and put it on the boy. Okay. Good call. Yeah. So yeah, the I'll armored, take one too. armored vest is going to raise each of your toughness by three. So okay. you can increase your toughness by three, whatever it is right now. Okay. You said, is there enough for, for each of us to... Each of you can have one. You can give one to your companions, too. Okay. All right. If everybody's gearing up, then Lily also gears up like that. Okay. Uh, that will help. So you said Marilyn was going to... You're just going to check the chamber? What are you going to do with your weapon? I see if it's in good working order. It seems you know, to like... be. It seems to you yeah. to be. Okay. Not like rusted out like some of these vehicles are. Right? No, no. no All right. It's, well, it's gonna... strange. There's things that still seem untouched here and there, and things mm. that seem completely transformed right now. It's a, it's a really odd scene. I'm supposed to do a jeep or run. Uh, I missed the question. Sorry. It had, we saw some kind of armored vehicle. Yeah, uh, it's 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 turned over and not you're not gonna be able okay. to drive it. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's head north on foot. All right. Yep. So, so just as you start to turn around and head north, you um, you notice that there are two creatures that come running around a corner towards you. And, and they both look like these half-human, half-dinosaurs. Uh, just standing directly in your way. 
and one of them kind of steps up and and holds a spear up and points it towards you and the other one looks at the three of you and sees you holding the weapons uh, and the weapons seeming to be working for you and it's it's you can just see it kind of growls and its eyes kind of focus in on you like for some reason that's important to it you don't know why but it seems to be important to it to see you in the state you're in carrying these weapons <clears throat> and that creature actually turns around it barks something to the other one and then it turns around and starts running away in the opposite direction where it came from uh oh All right, well, I'm going to try and drive off the other one by shooting over his head. Okay. So this is an intimidation attack? Uh, I was hoping it would be a maneuver, but yeah. Okay. Um, so that would be a six, I guess. All right, give me just a second here. What did you say it was again? A six. A six on an intimidate. Yeah, that's that is not successful. It just stands there holding its ground. Okay. Like this, these guys are are tough. And Constance says, "But we are New Yorkers," <laughs> and so she. <laughs> So she, um, oh crap, what is she going to do? She is going to, um, yeah, she's going to be intimidating as well. All she's got is a chair, is a chair leg. And, uh, so she's just going to wave it in the air and scream at him. Okay. <laughs> Since they don't understand bullets. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's a seven. Intimidation total is a seven. Seven, yeah. She's not very intimidating. So that also doesn't work. It just keeps kind of poking its spear towards you. Just So I guess Marilyn's going to take a knee and say, well, let's see if these things work or not. And take a shot at the guy. All right. So there you go. You've got, you got three options here. You can do a, a, a non-automatic attack, which will only misfire on a one. You can do a rapid fire, which uses three rounds and misfires on a one or a two or you could do a full auto which adds four to your attack uses yeah. i think six rounds let's see here uses seven rounds and uh misfires on a one to four what's do i get a bonus damage for rapid fire or a, a rapid fire gives you a plus two bonus damage mm. go big or go home Oh, well, if you put it that way, full, full <laughs> auto. All right. Here we go. Oh, no. There's a uh, one to four. So you get, a, you get a zero total. Um, you don't misfire, and you get a zero total after you after you add in your bonus for rapid fire. Possibility. Yeah, I'm going to use the pass it. possibility for sure. I'm going to roll it. Okay. So ten and that a, adds a ten. Ten plus your last one was a five, so that's a fifteen. Is a plus and, uh, two, and then a yeah. plus four is a six. So you get a plus six on your fire combat. All right, so that's a fifteen then, because I have a nine on my fire combat. Fifteen. So it, it, you, it's the first time you fired this. You're not doing a real great job with it, but you managed to pump enough bullets into it to to kill it. <laughs> And it falls over. It falls over backwards. And and the the military officer that's with you just looks at you like, "How did you do that? These guns aren't working." Oh, I don't know. It works for me. Sorry, you know, it's just, this what's happening here seems to be affecting some people differently than others. I told you, young man. There's a lot you do not know. A lot I don't know. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so he kind of kind of sits up and and manages to stand and says, "I think I can make it. Let's head toward the hospital." 
Yep. Yep. Let's bring them along. Go for it. And so what I'd like to do is I want to get a survival total out of one of you, but then I'm going to allow each one of the other uh, others that are helping to assist in that uh, by cr creating your own survival. Well, it, yeah, creating your own survival totals as an assist. So you can tell me who the main person is that's going to try to lead you out and then who the assistants are. Who'd like to be the main? I'd, I'd vote for Marilyn. I haven't. I do have that skill, but what's it at? Nine total. Yeah, I have only have it at ten. I think it's more narratively it makes sense that you know where the house bros. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, whatever. All right, so yeah, I'll give a Marilyn a plus two on the difficult. I mean, a minus two on her difficulty uh, because she's the main one. So now, if if either of the other two of you can be successful in a survival check, you can add a, also add a plus one each to the attack to the to the right. survival effort. But just doing your own survival rolls, you you have to beat a ten. Um, I do not beat a ten. I got a fifteen. All right. All right. There we go. So Marilyn gets a total of uh, plus three. So, uh, and she needs to hit a 10, and she, but she's already starting with a plus three. Oh, I'm fine. There I'm you go. Over. I think that's a, uh, whatever, exceptional success or so. Yeah. So you, you manage to kind of find your way to a street and down a couple of alleys, and you can see now about two blocks up ahead of you, um, there's... A, a set of submachine guns that are all set up across the road with National Guardsmen behind them. You can see the hospital behind it. There's some ambulances. The, some of the technology there even seems to be working, unlike it has been behind you, at least for the time being. Um, it, but just as kind of hope jumps up and uh, uh, begins to rise, uh, you suddenly see this same dinosaur creature that you'd seen earlier that had gone running off that comes out and jumps out in front of you along with another one. And then the third one, it's just unmistakable. Uh, he, he's got red paint on his face. He's clearly the leader that they were telling you about before. They, nice. And the red face kind of turns his eye on you and you hear this low guitar, you know, low growl that's coming from it, and its its pupils kind of dilate as it fixes on you. You're important to him for some reason. You don't know why, but you're important to him. And so there's a total of three of them now that stand in the street between you and the guardsmen. Um, the guardsmen try to fear, and you hear their weapons go off, but it, you can just tell that there's just kind of this poof, pop, 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 as the bullets start advancing toward their backs where they mm. don't ever seem to reach him. He seems to be safe from them somehow or another. You don't know how. Uh, so the, the, the private, unfortunately, he's not going to be useful to you here. The mother and son kind of retreat back and try to hide behind a light pole, and you're now just going to have to face off against these and see what happens. Is there any narrative mechanic in this game where I can make the... 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 the, the uh... Triceratops come back and help? Uh, not really in this situation, no. Okay. Some yeah, some games do like fate. I was yeah. Uh, now now it, it's, 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 there probably are going to be some cards that are available okay. to you in the main game that you could hold on to for a scene like this that might cool. allow you to like play it and say okay. That Triceratops is back, especially in the Living Land, which is the realm that you're in right now. But right. but for purposes of this game, uh, no. Okay. So we're going to have a round where the villains go first. There's generally two types of scenes that you have in Torque. There's a type of scene that's called a standard scene. Usually the heroes have the advantages in those. Things tend to go easily for them. And then there's this type of scene that's called a dramatic scene. And those, the villains, normally are going to go first when you reveal one of these drama cards. And normally things are just generally harder on the humans. There's not going to be any special conditions imposed in this particular round, but uh, the, the villains are going to have a chance to go first. 
So red face is going to begin and give me just a second here. So he is going to direct an intimidation attack toward all of you. He's just going to roar really loudly. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. So he's, he's going to have a 19 intimidation total. And all you need, what is your intimidation rating? I have an 8. 8. That would 10. Be 10. All right. So for all of you, uh, you are going to be, you're going to have a condition that is called very stymied for this round. <laughs> what that means is there will be a minus four on all of your attacks because he's so successfully intimidated you. Right. Now this one is going to come rushing forward toward Marilyn and is going to attack her. And he generates a total of nine against her melee weapons. No, uh, my melee weapon is oh, my melee weapon is eight. Eight. So he is successful. His damage is going to be a twelve. What's your toughness? Ten. Ten. So you're going to take two shock. Then this one is going to rush down toward a Constance and is also going to attack. He generates a total of uh, seven. Oh, shoot. I got a melee of seven as well. So that's two shock for Constance. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Hang on. We, we got to compare his, his uh, 11... His 12 attack against your toughness to get that. Toughness. Oh, okay. I have a toughness of seven. Oh, okay. So that's actually would be two shock and one wound. Mm hmm. With a 12 total. No, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you put on a vest? Oh, you yes, put on I a did. vest. So that's 11. So that does get her back Sorry. to two, two shock, yeah. Okay. All if, right. Cool. If if he's zero to four points above your toughness on his damage roll, then you take two shock, and and you can okay. see it for the players that are in the game. You can see the damage results table in the handouts if you want to follow mm -hmm. along uh, while I'm calculating these. Sure. Yeah. So uh, there we go. All right, so now it's the player's turn. I said I have the ability called Helper. Which during my action eliminates up to two penalties from an ally. Does that include very stymied? Yeah. Is that one condition or two? And that would I that would be take it off both my allies? I I don't. Is think it my whole action? Let's what, what, let, let me see what it says exactly yeah. here. I, there are a lot of different ways I could read this. I don't know exactly how you're supposed to rule it. Yeah, this is this is all I got in the free RPG day packet. They only had 16 pages to tell me the rules, the module, the characters, okay. everything. So, you know, you can imagine it's a little thin. Um, right. So this would be an action. And I would say to eliminate two penalties, you have to eliminate the very vulnerable to make it vulnerable, and then the vulnerable to make it uh, no penalty at all. That's the way. Right. That, now, that's me interpreting it a little bit there, but that's how I would do it. You take an action. Yeah, it seems like a reasonable yeah. interpretation. So I'm just going to remove all the penalties from Constance. I think the way this looks is Lily uh, goes over to Constance and just puts the butt of the gun in the uh, dinosaur man's face. Says, Constance, get up. I need you. Okay. You're the most badass person here. <laughs> First time anybody's used the term badass with, for Constance. She's 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 owning it though. She's like like oh, yeah. getting into it pretty well. So. Oh know. yeah. Okay. She is awesome. So who wants to go next? 
Well, if she just gave Constance that uh, little boost, Constance is going to go ahead and and uh, take a swing at this uh, lizard lizard looking uh, creature. Okay. Who gets to start? Helps. And um, she's going to have a possibility to make this extra extra effective. And it's me a third one. All right, so that's a plus uh, 10. And my uh, Amelia 7, so 17. So 7 total melee. So mm -hmm. you're going to get to do your base damage plus one uh, eternity. Okay, cool. My base damage is uh, 9 plus eight, one eternity. Die. There we go. Great. Um, okay, 10. Yeah, so that actually ten, below eight. toughness. But it still does deal one shock damage to him. Okay. All right. All right. I guess yes. Marilyn's going to try to uh, shoot the lizard who's uh, approaching her. Okay. Are we doing a full auto, rapid fire? Uh, I'll do uh, uh, rapid fire. Okay. That's That'll give you a plus two. Maybe I should use that possibility die, or does it automatically misfire when I roll that too. How does so that work? It, it does it does misfire, but if you use a so you do get the mishap, so no, the possibility does not help out of that. Okay. Now if you'd roll a one, Oops. then you would be doing something that's called disconnecting, uh, which is really bad because suddenly you're not able to use the weapon at all. But you can use an action to re to, to repair it in your next turn if you want to. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go to the next turn now. And uh, during this next turn, the villains are going to go first again. And in this turn, in addition to that, the heroes are going to be stymied, which means you'll have a minus two on all of your actions. Okay. So we'll start with uh, this. Uh, first one that's across from Constance is just going to take a swing at her and see what happens. Okay. Oh, man. So that is a melee weapon's total of uh, 16. What is her melee weapon's ability? Uh, seven. Seven. So that is going to allow them their base damage of 12 plus... Mm. Oh, so that explodes. So that's a five. That's a right? five, right? Seventeen. Oh, oh twenty-two. No. Twenty-four against her toughness, which is what? Her toughness is uh, ten. And so that's fourteen to above. Wow. You would you would take four shock and two wounds from this attack. You can cancel out shock by rolling a DE and you can cancel out in a possibility and wounds the same way, but you, you're going to have to spend, uh, uh, you, or you can, or you can accept it all. Uh, I think I'm uh, taking two wounds, two wounds for shock. Um, Boy, I'm going to take the two wounds and spend a possibility on the shock. Okay. Um, because I'm I'm going to be... Uh, so you roll an eternity die on that. Okay. Would would you have exhausted your shock on that attack? I would have, yeah, I, okay. I already, I only had two shock left. So, so, so the only damage you take is the two shock. You don't go above your shock limit. And so now you're taking three points off your shock limit with this roll here. Okay, so then, it, so then that that means I don't take any shock then. Right. Or, or okay. No, 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 no. Well, you what would have uh, happened? Take what happened was the attack took you up to your shock limit. It actually you don't count anything above your shock limit. 
and then okay. and then when you hold the eternity die with the possibility that three off of the shock limit, so it took you down to okay. limit minus three. Yeah. Does okay. that make sense? So then I actually I actually get a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Cool. That's what I'll do. I've got. Now, uh, now, also keep in mind with those two wounds, you're going to take a minus one penalty for each of those on each action that you take. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. This is your only chance to use possibilities and negate it. You may not want to do that. I'm just telling you that at this point. So. Right. Right. No, that's I've got. Uh, that gives me one possibility left. So I'm going to hold on to that for okay. a when I last ditch effort. So Redface now comes charging toward Lily and is going to attack her. Okay. And he generates an unarmed combat total, uh, I'm sorry, a melee weapons total of 12. What is Lily's melee weapon? Uh, 10. 10. So that's two above, so he's going to do his base damage of 12 against her My toughness. toughness is 10. 10, so that'll be two shock to Lily. Okay, I'll take two shock. And now the last one here. Attack Carolyn. So that is a melee weapons total of 12. Yep, beats me by three. And so... That will do a base damage of 12 against her toughness of with, with the vest. Of 10. 10 with the vest? Yeah. Okay, so two shock as well. And now we've uh, got the hero's turn. The heroes have a stymied condition this turn. Do we all saw the very stymied from last turn? No. No, the, the, uh, the conditions disappear at the end of your turn. Okay. Any any condition you have disappears at the end of your turn. So I'm gonna just fix my weapon. I'll try to you know withdraw as much as you know I step back a bit and fix my weapon. Okay. So you get to do that automatically. There's nothing required right. to do other than that. And who wants to go next? Now, one other thing I should mention. I apologize. There is, you have the option of doing multiple actions in one turn. Yeah. So if you wanted to do a second action, you could do it with a minus two penalty. You could, you could do a third action okay. with a minus four penalty. So the reason I'm mentioning that is if Marilyn wants to try to attack with a minus four penalty, she can do that. Minus I, four because of the stymied? The stymied plus the fact that you're doing a multi action. Uh, yeah. The reason I mentioned that is see how if you risk another misfire, but that's going to happen right. anytime you attack anyway. I think you're right. I, I think I would try to quickly jam it or whatever and then unload on this guy in front of me. Okay. But I'll just do a, a single shot, though, because I, I do want to take <laughs> There you go. Yep. And I think I'll spend a possibility die to uh, hit him hard. Okay. So that's a 23 total. Sorry, I didn't mean to just roll it three times. All right, so that's a 23 uh, plus my fire. Uh, let me do that. So that's a 17 to hit. Yeah, so you're going to get to do your base damage for the weapon plus one eternity die of damage. All right, so I do 17. 17. So, uh, so you you knock it back. Uh, you hit it square in the chest with one round, and it falls back against the pavement, dead. Yeah. Nice. All now, right. If you can just do that every round, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. How much no pressure. You spend on a single roll. Only one. Okay. Uh, now, again, when you have the full game, you're going to have cards that will be available to you that will allow you to get additional re-rolls. And, okay. and that will also add to your bonus total. All right. So I'm going to... I'll try this out. So I want Lily to full auto multi-target. Can I do that? Yes. 
the multi target will give you a minus two on your total. All right. So, I'm at a ne- so but I also have a negative two already. So, this means I have no bonus or no penalty at all. It cancel out. Okay. Uh, so, let's do that. Oh, well. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter what I said. I was so, <laughs> so, Lily pulls her weapon out and she starts trying to aim it toward one of the dinosaurs. And, and the weapon literally begins to kind of vanish in her hands like it's half there and half not there wow and and suddenly uh you're also feeling a little bit different like you're no longer immune to all this stuff that's transforming around you and uh like you're in danger of becoming like one of those feral humans you're just beginning to feel that now all of a sudden at at this Mm. failure uh what you can you're going to be able to generate a reality total for an action on a future turn to try to do what we call reconnect which is to reconnect okay. to your home reality but right now you're not connected to it and you you're actually in danger of you know turning into one of these feral humans or something even worse than that can i give into my feral humanness and just punch the dinosaur in the face um in, in the real game, there's actually a way you can like own your transformation. I, there's okay. no rules in the quick start that it, describe how that's done. So um, I, 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 just, I wouldn't know exactly what to do with that. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Constance now has a turn. Okay. Um... Constance, Constance is going to once again take a swing at this guy. She wants to, she wants to end this thing. Okay. Um, and she's even though she's been, uh, she's been hurt, so she takes a minus four. Minus two for the stymied minus, condition, and then minus four for, um, for uh, the. I, I'm the, sorry, the, and then another the minus wounds. two because of the two wounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so minus four total to the. Okay. Right. Her uh, bonus. Oh my gosh, um, she's just gonna miss. Um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna spend that last possibility, okay, and try to, to uh, hit this guy. So you have a 15 total of plus two. Yep, and my melee is seven, so. Nine. Yeah, you do manage to do deal another shock to it while it's struggling with you, but that's about it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I want to take a second action, just push it in the face. If that's okay. This the second action. Well, you would have had to take a uh, penalty. You oh, get, okay. You right. Clear it before your first action. Right. Oh, so okay. so how it works is. You declare all of the actions that you want to do, and then you generate one bonus total, and then you apply okay. that to all of the actions with a penalty on it. That's that's how that would work. So okay. you can you can try that on the next turn if you want to, though. Yeah, let's do it next turn. Okay. So we've actually reached the next turn, and during this turn, I am going to allow the heroes to go first, but. The uh, villains are going to have the up condition, meaning they get an extra die roll when it's their turn. Ooh boy. So, you may proceed. Yeah, so I, I want to punch this guy. So I think um, I'm, she's just going to charge towards this uh, dino man with the red stuff on his face. Okay. And I, I grow by his cloak and push him in the face. Then I get off of him and I keep punching him. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be an all-out attack, I guess. I'm going to take two all-out attacks. Okay. Put Do you want to try to connect during this turn? Nah, man. I don't want to punch people in the face. Unless okay. Okay. they're free. Just to be I know it would cause Austin act to try to connect. Nah, I, I punch people in the face. Are you kidding me? Okay. I'm, I'm a cave woman now. You okay, all done right, that. I got it. <laughs> all right, let's roll these dice. All right, so this is sixteen. I get a plus four, and where's the? Uh, 
so that's a plus seven. Five minus two, taking two actions, so that's a plus five. And so I have to do a 14. So and I'll roll a possibility into that, I guess. Okay. Alright, so it adds 10, right? No, it automatically adds at least. So it's a 3. So 20 is 20 for your total with your plus 8. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a plus 8. Wait, you, got a, eight? you got a plus 8 for your 20. Oh, 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 I see. It's a different. Hold on a second. So you got a, you've got a, a skill total, and so then... Plus 8, and then plus 8, plus my unarmed combat yeah. is a 17. 17, okay. So that is going to do a base damage of your strength, plus 1 eternity die. Alright. So let's roll my strength. Yeah. It's a d6? Yeah, just the d6, and then add that to your strength. So it's a 9 plus an eternity die, which is a d6. Right. So 13. Okay, so that is going to do two shock. It would ordinarily do two shock to red. Red actually is possibility rated, and he is going to spend a possibility. Oh, uh, crap. That's fine. To get rid of both of those shock. Well, guess what, Red? You getting punched some more. All right, so you use the same act. You don't you use the same action total. At, oh, I, I don't. Right. So you're gonna, you just use oh. no. You just use the same plus whatever it was you got before. I think a plus seven, plus eight. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I just do fourteen damage to him again, or fourteen attack and no rolling. Fourteen. Okay, and so that again will. Uh, that's going to do, I guess that's two shock? Or, yeah. I did two shock last time, so I should do two yeah. shock again. Yeah, so you, do, you do two shock to him, and this time he won't cancel it out. All right. All right. Yeah, I hope you like that dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess Marilyn's going to take a shot at red. Okay. She'll go uh, rapid fire again. And are you going to uh, do multiplications or just one? Oh, hmm. I think I'll do a one another multi action. I'll tw shoot twice. All right. Now I think that you have to pick two. I, I let Lily do it the other way just now, so I'll let you mm -hmm. do it this way as well. But I think ordinarily you have to pick two different targets to do a multi action. But but. But we'll go ahead and do it this way because Lily got a turn that way as well. And oh, I didn't think okay. about that until like after she'd gone. Yeah, my bad. Right. Well, I mean, I could, I could, there's two targets shooting each one once. I don't care. You could do that as well. Sure, that, that's fine. I'll let you take a shot. That'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and spend on the possibility. I've still got a couple left. Okay. All right, so that's 26. It's a plus 9. Plus my fire of 13. Nine. So no, I'm sorry. I've got 18. Uh, is my, I, got, I rolled a 9, and I, I have a plus 9 for when my fire combat is 9, but a minus here, right? Oh, uh, you actually get a plus 2 for rapid fire. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. okay. Cancel each so you get a plus two for rapid fire, right. but a minus two for targeting. So, so you can right. 18. Okay. Yeah, so that's going to let your base damage put one DE to each one. So let's start by rolling your DE for, for red. A red vulnerable? No. Can I declare an odd attack? No, the attack becomes vulnerable. Yeah, you're you're vulnerable. Oh, I become vulnerable. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. That is fifteen. 
15 damage. So that is going to do two more shock to red. And now you can roll for uh, the the one that's over here. Go roll another D. So that's 18. And I don't get a, a bonus, a damage bonus for doing rapid fire, or no? No, it just increases your chances to get uh, to higher hit, results, right. which hit higher, which also give you more chances to the e. the 18 damage. Okay. So, yeah, so um, he, you knock him back and he is dead now. Whew. Come on, girls. Let's do this. All right, so Red picks himself, uh, kind of shakes off Lily, and looks over at Maryland and just charges toward her and just furious uh, at uh, these fire sticks that she's using and takes a swing at him. He does have the up condition. Yeah. So he does not, in the up condition, he doesn't get a minimum 10. It's just a 14. So he generates a melee total of 11. And what is her melee? You guys melee? hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I, hadn't, I haven't gone yet. Was oh, I'm I sorry. To go for him? Oh, you, it's, I'm sorry. You sure were. So I, we'll pick up that in a minute. Go ahead, Constance. Sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. That's um, I, uh, Constance is going to go ahead and uh, going to step into red here. Okay. And uh, and take a swing. Um, hey, finally a fifteen. Uh, that's a two, and my melee is seven. That suddenly comes to a nine. Yeah. So we'll do one. Uh, that comes in. That yeah, that's his. Okay. All right. All right. So now he's going to charge over to Maryland, and we've regenerated the full on. We're going to roll, which is good as just. He's going to do a total of. He's going to get a mag weapons total of twelve. What do you say, Maryland? Ability woe? Nine. Nine. So we do is base damage, which is also um, is also twelve. What's her bonus? Ten. So Ten. she takes two. So she takes two. All right. So we get, begin another turn. On this turn, uh, the ones are going to go first, and Red is going to take another swing angrily at Mary. There we go. He's going to spend a possibility on that. Um, are we able to spend a possibility to counteract that? You no, you cannot do that in Torg Eternity. Now I'm Shoot. I'm okay. basing that on previews and not on the quick start, but that's what how I understand it. So. I I, I remember there was a discussion on one of the boards about it, but I couldn't remember if it had been decided. So that's cool. So that's a plus nine. He has a 20 melee weapons total against Marilyn's uh, 10 this time. Uh, I guess her, her nine. So he just gets to roll one. Uh, actually gets to roll two DE for Dan here. E. So he does 17 plus one is 18. My toughness is 10. 18 against 10 is an 8, so you do two shock and wound. And now okay. it's the player's turn. Blow his head off, Marilyn. I will give that a shot if no one else is going to do something. Yep, I'm going to unload into this guy. Let's see now. Do I want to try to 
do uh I think maybe I should do multi attack again. Two shots. I think I can do more damage that way. What do you think? Uh, it's not supposed to do that. Oh, that's right. Same target. Never mind. All right. I'll just yeah. do full auto at the guy then. Okay. Yeah. Reroll. Wow. <gasps> that's Roll again. it. And this is the magic of Torg, folks. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Uh that's uh, a fi that's a fifty-eight. <laughs> that's freaking awesome. Okay. Now just just as a note, there there is a card that's called a glory card that <laughs> is available in the main game. If you have a total roll that goes above sixty, you can play this role and the tail of your victory gets told all over the place raising the hopes of all the oppressed people within the zone and and enabling you sometimes to actually push back in the war and push the uh, defenders uh, on the physical map of the world uh, push them back uh, uh, in a way and, you, yeah. and if you if anybody had a drama it. card right now it, you're almost you would almost be guaranteed to be getting that six so a drama card and a glory card here would have done some amazing things but well, he's gonna stands, plus four because he didn't all the tech so it's a 62 yeah i had a full auto so i get a 62 actually oh okay so well, you did it right there so you actually have a 13 14 15 bonus <laughs> To, to your my, fire combat, not, my nine. So that's twenty-four. Nice. Yeah. And, oh, and that plus four, by the way, that goes to your uh, not to your high total, but to your effect total. So, oh, okay. so that would be, Yeah. So we actually get you thirteen, fourteen, fifteen plus four is nineteen. It's plus nine is your fire skill. So that's a twenty-eight. Yep. <laughs> so you're gonna roll two d two d e of damage here, and then you can also do a player's call, which means you can describe something you, that you think happens as a result of your attack. And if I agree to it, then it happens. All right. So that damage is gonna be nineteen damage, and I'm gonna say that uh, he was getting ready to roar, and I managed to shoot into his mouth. So I get him in like a sensitive area, let's say. Okay. All right. So. Um, yeah, so you you wound him pretty. You you wound him here, and he takes some more shock as he gets knocked back. Whoops, wrong one. You kind of knock oh, him wow. back, and he takes more shock, and he's he's very severely wounded. He's bleeding, and uh, so start of the next turn. It's the villain's opportunity to go first. He kind of looks up at you from his hands and knees on the ground, and uh, he's uh, he's he's furious. Uh, but he gives you this glance like you haven't seen the last of me, and he jumps and turns around and kind of vanishes behind some buildings off to the left. And about the same time, you notice behind you this massive group of about like thirty more these dinosaur creatures that begin to kind of advance in your direction. Laura is screaming, the boy's holding a hold of her, and uh, they've, they're going to reach you probably within 30 seconds or so, shouting and charging toward you. Are we That's... able to run to the, uh, to the barricade? Yes, you can. Do in it. time? Right. Yes. So uh, you, get, you manage to gather up all of the people that are uh, with you and uh, kind of help them as they limp toward the barricade and just to reach it uh, the guardsmen open fire and uh, everything just kind of begins to flash by and go in slow motion and realize everything that's happened and the guns begin to blaze and they, they just go down 20 and 30 feet away from you just go down uh, just very, very easily um, care people start to rush up to you and uh, with stretchers and uh, first aid kits and uh, just emergency room and that you're just surrounded by all of these people that are helping you. Uh, a few minutes later, you find your helicopter, all three of you being pulled 
of uh, this hospital and you, you kind of get a glimpse chaos in Manhattan behind you. All of these fires burning the southern half of it while the lights that are flicker on and off and uh, all kinds of uh, sound distance. From there uh, we are going to fade out and fade into a very calm lake that is we're just outside of Atlanta. It is uh, 10 days later. Uh, it's near sunset. Uh, it's, you're at a, a kind of a refugee center that only serves as a camp uh, or a retreat for people. And uh, it's been several days. There have been all kinds of crazy stories coming through the news from all across the world. But here and now, everything is pretty calm and safe and serene. You've been, just been working with volunteers in the Red G camping, having their place to go and, uh, and eating there. And each of you looking, um, are, uh, they're the person in charge of the center. It's uh, an older lady by the name of Mary. Uh, she, she comes up to each one of you and on this particular day, about 10 days later, and says, there's somebody here to see you in this long southern drawl. Uh, come come on down to the mess hall, says. So you, a few minutes later, have come all gathered. This, it's, the mess hall is really kind of this open air thing. There's outdoor. It's, it's There's a there's picnic tables, and then there's a roof over it. And uh, there's a few people milling around here and there, including Mary. And as you're sitting at one of those tables, um, Mary, you see Mary talking to a couple of really strange looking individuals. One of these individuals has what looks like a backpack on, and he's got this leather cap with these aviator goggles. And he's, he's speaking to her. And then there's this other gentleman that has this, this, this greenish uh, cape that has one of those old Robin Hood style hoods on it, and he's got this rapier, this thin sword that's kind of hanging down beside him. And she speaks to them for a minute, and then she kind of points your way. And they talk to each other, and then the one with the rapier uh, begins to walk towards you, while the other one actually turns around and walks out of your view. And you swear after this other one walks out of your view, you suddenly hear this and it sounds like a jet go off and the area lights off and you look up into the sky and you see the silhouette just kind of roar off with this trail of smoke that goes behind it uh, just a few seconds later. And by the time you kind of take that in, the, uh, the other gentleman kind of comes up to you and gets within a few feet of you and looks at you and says, he got this, this, the Spanish European accent, very deep, very thick, but he, he's speaking in English. And he looks at each one of you and he says, you're the ones who brought the mother and the boy out of Battery Park? Yep. There's Laura. I don't believe I got the bit. His name is his name. Yeah, you didn't get up and all of that, but his name is Luke. We were, we were a little bit at the time. We found out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're the one that rescued the National Guard soldier? Yes. And who, may I ask, are you? He, he, and he just ignores your question, and he says, the weapons the National Guard soldier had, they worked for you. Yes. Quite, quite well. So it disappeared in the thin air. <laughs> it, dis it disappeared, but it worked for a time. Yeah. He looks at you and he says, sure you are. Yes. What's going on? He says, uh, actually, there's a bit that's going on right now. And he leans in and pronounces the phrase that sounds alien in the language where Katanali he says you are the Katanali the ones who are born out of the storm and I look at uh, Marilyn and Lily and like 
okay, look back at him. And what is that supposed to mean, sir? Yeah, he says the invaders, the people that came into your world, uh, they brought with them these strong forces, these storms. And it transforms some people like you into those that resist them, that can resist their realities. You have a very special gift, but, he says, you're not the only ones. There's many, many more that are just like you. Yeah, Lulu is really skeptical. It appears that you are also these people. He could say, you, you could say so in a way, though I'm not from your world. Ah, uh, you came with the He kind of looks at you and looks off the side and looks back at his, I wouldn't say I'm exactly with them. Fair enough. And then he looks across at the three of you and he says, uh, take heart, my friends. Uh, the day that they came seemed like the end of your world. But tomorrow, today, it's the first day of your world liberation. And there's a role for you to play in it. The role involves writing dinosaurs? I'm in. <laughs> This close, you were this close. This close. <laughs> I just need an excuse. <laughs> yeah, Marilyn's something jaded, like, uh, you know, same bullshit, different day. Come on, we can't let these guys have their boys' club. We gotta break it up a little bit. What is it you need us to do? He says, uh, right now, nothing. But. The day has come where you're going to be asked to assist in the defense of your world. The day's coming for that. You can count on me. He says, very good. And he pulls out a piece of parchment from his pocket and he reaches down and picks up a, a kitchen knife at the table in front of him. He takes this parchment and he opens it up and kind of just tosses it up in the air in front of him. And as it's falling down, he kind of takes the knife and flips it underneath where the knife flies through the air and pops its way through the parchment. And then it just kind of lands in the wooden wall behind where the knife has got the parchment skewered against the wall behind you. He says, from us again, he says, but from my first a couple of steps back, pulls out of the chair and it just swipes it across and makes kind of an S type shape. And when the S type shape finishes with a rapier, he just goes poof into this green puff of smoke and uh, vanishes right in front of your very eyes. Even as the knife in the wall is still kind of baba da baba da baba da baba da to the side. <laughs> Well, oh, that's the thing. I thought the uh, the dinosaurs were fairly uh, in t uh, impressive. To it was quite new. I think we have a lot to learn. He tries really hard to look impressive. So, you want to? So you want to uh, pull that parchment out and see what what's on it? Mm. So it's yeah. Well, what's the parchment anyway? Yeah. The, look at the parchment, and it has this design on it that looks like this. Hmm. Hmm. The magic sword. I think the Sumerian is a similar. Uh, a pointed star. Yeah. And as as. Uh, you look at at it and wonder what it means. Uh, the camera kind of pulls away from you and it's begin to roll. Yeah. And you reach the end of the story. Nice. Nice job, man. Thanks. That's good. Well, uh, we've got maybe 
still there, though, so uh, you were probably only very glad you were there. <laughs> and uh, if I uh, would also say hi to all the YouTubers that are out there for me, I just put it in for them. I'm not associated with them in any way at all whatsoever. Uh, but uh, they are kickstarting right now. They're going to be kickstarting until June the 30th. If you're watching this on YouTube after June the 30th, it's too late to get on the Kickstarter, but there will be a copy of this game for you to go buy if uh, you want to buy it. Uh, the game is better than what you saw today. What you saw today was was fun and was enjoyable, but uh, this the game is, has even more stuff in it to make it entertaining. And uh, it, I, I have a little preview that I did that you can watch on my YouTube channel as well if you want to. So, we're going to bid goodbye to our present viewers now, and then I'll talk to the players a little bit.